Welcome to the new and approved Game and Box. And you can probably tell what game I'm looking at today, probably by the title of this video and also by this mug. And this is the Wayland Utini Corporation logo, which has been faded through extensive dishwasher use as holding a nice cup of tea. So you can probably work out that I'm looking at an alien inspired game and this is Alien. For the Commodore 64, released by Argus Press Software Group in 1984. And Game and Box, uh, the concept behind these videos was just so I could do like a quick video during the week when you know I had other stuff on, and I could just grab a box off the shelf and show it to you because I love sharing nostalgic items with you people. It's, yeah, I, I, I just can't get enough of it, which is why I try and make five videos a week. Uh, but I've decided to improve it a bit, which has meant that this video takes a bit longer to make now, but you know, I think it's worth it, or well, I hope it is. Got a uh, Mind Games Alien written down the side there. And this is in a, a quite a nice large case, reminiscent of a VHS box, but obviously without the VHS. It's got a kind of a squidgy feel. On the front we've got uh, the Alien Egg, which is very symbolic. It reminds me of the uh, V uh, series with that shape there. And you know, eggs they normally kind of hatch at the top, don't they? This is kind of seeping out of the bottom. I'm not sure what's going on, but you can work out what it is. Underneath that we have this alien created checkerboard design from their ship. Um, yeah, that looks kind of nice. Well, it's not their ship, is it? It's owned by those massive people. What are they called? Oh, I can't remember. I'll call them Stanleys. Anyway, let's look at the back. This is one of my favourite films. I should be able to know what they're called. They're called Space Hockeys, aren't they? Disc Jockeys. Hockeys, Jockeys, Space... something like that. I'm sure um, I'll remember as soon as I finish making the video. So this is the Mind Games series by Argus Software, and the idea was to make games which were more thought-provoking and involving and extended your mind into the computer system. We live as we dream alone by Joseph Conrad, the famous uh, 19th century Polish-English writer. So, the Nostromo is coming home. You awake. As commander, you must grapple with a terrifying life force you cannot comprehend. Sounds like my kids. The ship has become a trap. Something evil stalks the corridors. Yep, sounds like my kids still. Using the unique Argus personality control system, you must command the crew to execute your plans. Beware! They will interpret your orders in their own individual way. <laughs> this is a game about my children, it must be. Decisions are real time and the drama unfolds across a full graphics map of a ship. Every time you dare to try this epic battle of survival, you will be faced with the reality of the action, and because of the unique PCS facility, it's different every single time! Inside is a free 16 page booklet, which sets the scene. Splendid. And you know, in this series I want to try and pick games which are interesting in their box formation. Not just, you know, a standard cassette jobby, but games which appeal to me for their nostalgia and because of what the box holds. That's the whole idea here. Who have we got here? We've got the Navigator, shy, skillful, intelligent, panics easily, yep, executive officer, direct, imaginative, cautious. He's not bloody cautious, he's the one who ends up with a face hug on his bloody face. Science officer, secretive, unlikable, brilliant, occasionally illogical. I quite liked him. Captain, solid, dependable, courageous, excellent leader. Doesn't he farm out half his decisions to this guy about the alien? That's not excellent leader. Well, I suppose it could be he's the science officer. Let's not go into it in too much detail. Engineering officer, physically strong, low IQ. He didn't seem that stupid to me. Come on. Warrant officer, there's Ripley, witful, ambitious, authoritative, resourceful. And engineering officer, what's his name? Burke, cynical, rebellious, untrustworthy, and unflappable. Inside the box. We get the cassette. Let's have a look at that first. Oh, I do miss having games on a medium like is this. Like this. Look at that. It's just it's a thing of beauty. Look at the tape. Yes. Let's see if we can focus on that tape. Come on, camera. Get some focus on that tape. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at it. Slightly transparent. So nostalgic. 
Nice little label, double-sided label as well. A lot of tape games used to just, fuck it, we'll just put a label on one side, but this has got a double side. Gives you nice instructions there. To load, press shift, run, and stop keys. Splendid. Two holes in the top, right protect holes. Uh, I was watching uh, on tech mode the other day. Apparently, I didn't realize this, but different types of tape, like ferric and stuff like that, metallic tape, have different holes here to tell the player what type of tape it's based on. It doesn't matter on pre-recorded tapes, but that was an interesting little fact. I didn't know that. And this is the, the main show of this game and box, the Alien Manual. In space, no one can hear you scream, but they do spend most of their time on a planet where, which has an atmosphere, which would get around that problem. So uh, here's the Nostromo, commercial towing vehicle, the Nostromo. And this manual kind of sets you up for the story, because you've got to remember, this came out in 1984, which was five years after the film, but it took a long time for films to get onto videotape in those that, that time period. You know, I used to go to the video shop and films which had came out four years ago had just been released on videotape. And for many people, this would have been their first experience of Alien, especially for children, you know. They might have heard all the hype around it and read about it in magazines, but to have a background story like this is pretty essential, especially back then. The factory starship of an Ostromo is deep within the depths of interstellar space on its long journey home. All is quiet on board, the ship seems deserted with its main lights shut down. An eerie atmosphere pervades the Ostromo. Suddenly, the empty silence is broken by the electronic pulsing of the starship's computer, affectionately named Mother. I love Mother. How basic it seems now with all its whirring and clanking. Um, I made a video actually where I show a program which I made when I was about nine where I tried to recreate mother in basic or a sort of mother type intelligent system uh, check it out I'll link it below uh, so this takes us through the basic story of alien uh, they hear an acoustical beacon which must be through radio waves because obviously acoustics can't travel in space and they wouldn't get to a spaceship from a planet even if it were they could that's why the whale situation in Star Trek, that bloody Star Trek film where they hear the whale from space, that doesn't quite work, does it? Later, as they approach the mysterious source of the signal, they say equatorial in orbit nailed, says Ash on the bridge. I think in the film, the planet is about 80 km kilometers across, but it has a gravity which is almost on par with Earth. It's like 0.8 or something, which is crazy. It must be so bloody dense. It's made of like Black hole matter, almost. Crazy shit. So this takes us through the story. Here we get the um, the uh, space jockey type people who are massive, much bigger than they appear in Prometheus. And here's the cautious uh, Kane who goes and sticks his face over a fucking egg, you dickhead. Here's the face hugger. And they go through and then they, they have an argument. It says here something like, Oh, leave Kane to Ash, says Dallas, exhausted. For a moment, the ship is peaceful. Peaceful. Kane rests in surprise and comfort. He hasn't got much choice, has he? Jesus Christ. Here's a little discussion. Uh, they chat happily for some time. And we go into the game instructions. And this feels like an appropriate time to give you a bigger look at the game. So I'll bring that monitor down. Splendid. You, you like that? <laughs> nice little touch, isn't it? I thought so anyway. Uh, I'll talk you through the gameplay. The aim of the game is to destroy the alien or drive it away from the Nostromo. For instance, you can evacuate the three crew members in the lifeboat, Narcissus, as long as you don't leave any living crew behind you. And if you set the ship onto auto self-destruct, it will kill the alien. The action begins as the first crew member has been killed by the embryonic alien hatching. This random start to the game is complicated by your not knowing which member of a crew is an android. So in this game, any member of the crew, not Ash in particular, can be the android. It adds a bit of a variability to the platform. You will be presented with a menu-driven system of character control, and once the personality control system has been set in motion, uh, on completion of the game, you will receive a rating for your performance. This is compiled from the final state of the alien, the crew and the ship. Your crew will find throughout the three decks of a ship a uh, number of tools and weapons which you can tell crew members to use. They won't necessarily obey you, this is their personality control system. 
it depends on whether they're capable of using them and how they feel, and etc. Be extremely careful using the weapons. On being hit, an alien, the alien secretes an acid which eats through the hull of the ship and anything else in its way. The perfect defense mechanism. And throughout the game, it's all played from this uh, perspective where you, you, you're looking down on the ship. You can use commands like get item, leave item, remove grill, attack, and you cycle through individual players and tell them where to go with the aim of, you know, of either blasting the alien out of the airlock or getting it in the, sh the uh, escape pod and sending it on its way, or evacuating three of your crew in the pod if the rest are dead and getting the fuck off the ship after setting it to auto-destruct. And if you get involved in this game, this is why it's a mind game series, if you get involved in it, it's really good. It got mixed reviews views when it was launched um some people were like oh this is bullshit but i don't think they were really getting into it because other reviews gave it five out of five and really you know top rate stuff because it is good if you throw yourself into it if you're expecting some sort of graphical masterpiece then you, well this is the 80s that wasn't going to happen to start with but you need to throw yourself into it and get involved uh, sometimes uh, Jones appears, he kind of runs across the screen and you can get him if you've got a cat box. And you can also pick up lasers, incinerators, electrical pods, you can open airlocks, you can remove grills and occasionally you'll hear like a shh sound and that is the alien opening something or moving about. Uh, and if, if you find a grill which has been opened, which you haven't done, you can be pretty damn sure the, the alien's done it. And you know, you need to have a certain amount of memory to remember all these things. And this is useful where you have a pen and paper and it's useful to record things. And that's what we used to do, isn't it, in the 80s? We used to make maps and write down things which happened in the game rather than keeping them all saved in a little electronic notebook in the game for us. It was more fun, in my opinion. Uh, we've got hints for survival. In order to begin the, to understand the complexities of your role as commander of an Ostromo, it is suggested you play the initial set scenario offered on the title page. So you can go into this with a set scenario and get out, which is a quicker game, or you can go for the full length game and work your way through. Each time you play the game, the crew and the alien will behave differently. So take your time exploring all the options, then when the going gets rough, you'll know what's at hand and what's not. Your early moves are vital. And once you are in the game, all sorts of events might happen. Think them out and outwit the brute force of the alien. The best of luck. And there's a little bit on the back that talks about the computer has opened up a whole world of new games. Go beyond the games of zapping and fast reflexes and reach into that world. The computer takes on a life of its own. Adventure and strategy games start where arcade games finish. And here is the world of imagination and thought. Mind games are a range of programs designed to stimulate an ima that imagination and take you into new and strange worlds. Sophisticated graphics, meh, and great presentation are all part of a package. And, you know, that, that is where the computer came to life, isn't it? It's creating that landscape where you had to use your imagination because the graphics weren't there, and the cover art helped, and it just created a world of imaginative gameplay and thoughtful, um, you know, involvement and I think we're lacking that quite a lot in a lot of today's games but Alien is one where it was very strongly put together it was actually uh, designed by uh, Roy Gibson and Concept Software although there's not much mention of that except for a little tiny detail in the back of the manual so there we go that is Alien Game and Box for the Commodore 64 I hope you've enjoyed the new format I'll leave you with a bit more gameplay footage and I'll see you in the next video for now Enjoy the rest of your evening, and good night. Also, don't have nightmares. Turn off the juice bar!